Hey there gang, you know the deal by now. I have been given this box of comic books to grade for sale on eBay, but I have no idea what is inside. What four color wonders must await? Well, we'll make that discovery together, so if you like comic books, stick around. We're going to have some fun. Hey Bobby, welcome to Shanghala. My name is Duke and this is an unboxing video and yes as always I have no idea what is in this box of books that you are looking at apart from some broad parameters. I know that the collections that we purchase are sorted when they come in and big books go to CGC and are sold on a site called comiclink.com and, and so we're not going to find any big two or three hundred dollar books in here. If we do, well somebody screwed up. And, <laughs> One book that I found in one of these boxes recently, and I actually pulled and said, hey, that should go to CGC. It was uh, issue number eight of The Masked Rider, uh, the old Timely Atlas book that had Stan Lee posing as the character on the front cover. And that one went to comiclink.com and, and recently sold for $1,800. So sometimes yeah, we can find some big books in here, but normally these are the books that we would expect to sell for 10 to to $100 or so on eBay, which, which generally, you know, because people do take, you know, shipping into account when they bid on eBay, we're, we're talking mostly, you know, maybe $20, $30 books at retail, 15 maybe at the lowest. Well, sometimes books will sell for a little less than that. You, you never know what's going to happen on eBay. Things can get crazy or they can be just, just well, crazy dead. <laughs> but there shouldn't be any junk in this box either. That also should have been weeded out and sent into multi-book lots, which uh, other folks that work for the company work on. I, I actually also work on those sometimes as well. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is gonna be fun. So please like, share, subscribe, do all the groovy things. And let's go ahead and pull out the first deck from this box. And here's a classic book right off the bat. So this is a, a classic uh, Batman story, uh, Batman number 237. And as I recall, this story takes place at the um, superhero parade in Rutland, Vermont, the Halloween parade, which was an actual thing for a lot of years and was featured in several comic books. I don't know if Rutland, Vermont still does their big costume parade where all the people dress up as various superheroes, but uh, yeah, it was featured in uh, several comic books of the early 70s. Brave and the Bold, number 43, that's an early Hawkman appearance, the Silver Age Carter Hall Hawkman, or Katar, I think I pronounced it Katar as a kid. And I, there are two books in here. So the other one is Brave and the Bold 80, Batman and the Creeper. Very nice. Brave and the Bold 42, that's another, another Hawkman book. Just one in there. Here we've got uh, the Volume 2, first issue of Wolverine. And as expected, normally where there's Volume 2, there's Volume 1 in these boxes. There's Issue 2. Issue 3, Issue 4, and have we got a 1? We don't. What the heck? No 1. Here's the second appearance of the Tarantula, Amazing Spider-Man 147. Some Punisher Hitman action in 175. Micronauts. You've heard me uh, talk about this book in some recent uh, recent videos. I loved the Micronauts when I was a kid. This this was a really great series. Do yourself a favor because apart from issue one and eight, these don't really sell for very much. So you can you can get the full run pretty cheap. I think it went 57 issues. It was written by Bill Mantelo. And at the very least, get the first oh dozen or so issues that are drawn by Michael Golden. Uh, you'll you'll thank me. You will thank me. The Micronauts was a great great series. Oh wow. So here's a, a pre-hero issue of Strange Tales, number 99. Mr. Morgan's Monster. <laughs> is Stan Lee being alliterative? Strange Tales, number 180. I think this is the first appearance of Gamora. I think it was 180 that she made her debut in. Wow, Tomb of Dracula, number one. Nice. We, uh, last Halloween, we did some uh, mystery boxes, 
Uh, there were 75 sets in the uh, in the run, and the grand prize bonus book was a Tomb of Dracula number one. I never heard who got that book. I, I always love watching videos on YouTube of people who unbox our mystery sets, and uh, I never did see one with that in it. So who knows where it went? A man called Nova number one from uh, 1977, I believe, first appearance. This is Amazing Adventures number 11, the first appearance of the, uh, well, he was gray at this point. Kind of the same deal as with uh, with the Hulk, where the uh, Hulk was originally gray, and then they decided that that looked too much like mud uh, when printed, so they changed him to green. The Beast was initially gray, and, and then they did that sort of comic book trick where gray and, and black things are are sometimes highlighted blue. So, here's the thing. If you've seen the movies, you think the Beast has blue fur. He really, really doesn't. That's just a comic book convention. You know, people with, with dark hair, uh, you know, because you can't, you can't highlight something that's black and, and, you know, outlined in black. You can't color it black in a comic book. So they highlight hair with blue. Superman's hair was always highlighted in blue. He doesn't have actual blue hair. You would never in a Superman movie see Christopher Reeve or, or any of the uh, <laughs> lesser Reeves, I'll call them, because Christopher Reeve will always be my Superman. Uh, you, you never see him with actual blue hair. And so the Beast in the movies shouldn't actually have blue fur. Yeah, Mystique should have blue skin, but the Beast, that was just a comic book coloring convention. And uh, and so, yeah, they, they made him blue just because on the newsprint inside, looks okay on the cover, but on the newsprint inside, that gray just kind of washes out and looks like mud. So there's issue 12 with Iron Man, and this this was reprinted not too many years later in an issue of the Avengers. So there's an issue of Avengers with the same cover, and it's that same book. Here is number 14. This is interesting. Hmm. Dell Giant, number one, Tales from the Tomb. I wonder what year this is. This is probably, this looks like a, a post 1963 book. It was late 62 that Dell split from Western and started producing their own books. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. There. <laughs> Try and buy a Daisy BB gun out of a comic book today. People would flip. They would lose their shit if there was a BB gun ad in a comic book. So this is... I don't see a date. Tales from the Tomb number one. Do, 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 do. I don't see a date on this. Oh, 1962 by Dell Publishing. Okay. So I would say this is probably just after the split. This is probably late 1962. Because that just doesn't look like a Western cover to me. Western Publishing, which you probably know better, is Gold Key. That's what they uh, printed books under... Uh, that was their imprint after they split with Dell. Well, that's an interesting book. Actually, as long as I have it out, let's look inside as well. I mean, we, we looked at the Indicia, but let's take a look at the, the actual stories. There's a lot of stuff going on in here. I'll have to look up. I don't, I don't recall this title. I'm not familiar with it, so... I bet you it didn't last very many issues. It might have even been a one-shot. Huh. Cool. All right, Pep, number 151. And Archie had a kind of a... About the same time Batman was fighting space aliens all the time, Archie had kind of a, a fascination with aliens as well. Oh, wow. So Adventures of the Fly, number 16. Let's see... Archie didn't put the uh, issue numbers. It's weird. I mean, they did put the issue numbers on their humor books, but for some reason on their adventure books, they did not put an issue number on the cover. But somebody has helpfully put that on the bag for us. A lot of these uh, uh, superhero Archie stories issues uh, were written 
by Jerry Siegel, the uh, co-creator of Superman. Don't know if any of these particular ones were. Here's number nine, The Fly Meets the Cat Girl. Huh. You know, Catwoman wasn't uh, being used much by DC at this time. Archie could have called this character Catwoman and really, really screwed DC good. <laughs> Because they could have argued that the trademark had lapsed because Catwoman was not used for a good 15, 20 years. And she didn't really make her Silver Age appearance until pretty late in the Silver Age, like 66, 67. Here's issue three of The Jaguar, also Adventures of. Number 10 of The Fly, and that looks like Blackjack. The Demon number one. Well, that's cool. Action Comics. This is a, an early appearance of the Legion of Superheroes, the Adult Legion. And it was actually in this story where the marriage of uh, Lightning Lad and Saturn Girl was first revealed. Of course, they were adults in the story. And this is, uh, what is her name? Oh, you're right there. Luna Lanai. Uh, you, you see her a lot making cameo appearances here and there. She didn't appear for a, a long time after this story, but as one of Superman's great lost loves, she will occasionally make an appearance. And I think she, uh, I think she appeared in the recent Green Lantern series uh, by Grant Morrison. He used a lot of obscure characters, and I think, I think that uh, she was in there. Here is Action Comics 282. I think that's got a Monel appearance in it. Here's an early uh, Action Comics, 274. Well, not that much earlier. But you can see the art style is a lot different. Well, not really different. I mean, it looks like it's still Kurt Swan, but Swan was still kind of developing uh, at, uh, at this stage. I mean, he'd been around for a long time, but uh, he was still sort of developing a style independent of Wayne Boring, who was sort of the Superman artist. And look at that. We've got two of these. 274. One and two. That one's clearly the one in better condition. Here's Action 271, The Voyage to Dimension X. And 272, Superman's rival, Mental Man. <laughs> Neil Adams at uh, Continuity Comics had a character called Crazy Man. Um, too bad we didn't have a, uh, a giant uh, tabloid edition uh, Crazy Man versus Mental Man. <laughs> I would have bought that. Here's a, uh, a early Mr. Well, now, how do you say it? Uh, as a kid, I pronounced this Mixtelfix. Even though there's no F in there, that's just how I said it, because... You had to pronounce it somehow. And I guess it's sort of mixes pitalic is is how they say it on the Super Friends cartoon. I think they pronounce it differently today. Uh, but anyway, what I was going to say is this is a, a, a fairly early appearance because he's, he's looking very cartoonish still. It, it took them a while to sort of nail down. I mean, his very early appearances in the Golden Age, he was super cartoony and, and just wore a regular suit. Didn't have this uh, familiar costume. But, anyway. Well, there's another M. Is Perry White being Mental Man, too? No, he's Master Man. Huh. Perry White as Master Man in 278 of Action Comics. Here's Bizarro. 264. And the Kryptonite Man, which is not actually the Kryptonite Man, it's just Lex with a Kryptonite flashlight. 249. 266. I think this is the first meeting of Streaky and Crypto. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that that, that is. So if you're a Super Pets fan, there you go. That's the book for you. And poor old Superman with Supergirl having taken over, although she's Superwoman now. <laughs> how do you sh how do you show an old dog? A few extra lines around the uh, around the eyes, and then for some reason, because he's old, 
uh, Crypto's cape is tattered. <laughs> I don't know why uh, a, a tattered cape signifies age in a dog, but... And how long do Kryptonian dogs live anyway? It's a good question. Now this one, this one actually is a pretty early one. This is 230. Feels a little thin. I'll have to count the pages when I go to grade this. Here's Action Comics 202. Wow. And uh, Lois Lane with X-ray eyes. There was a character uh, who appeared in, actually before DC Comics, the first superhero <laughs> uh, of the, um, the pulp magazines that were owned by Harry Donenfeld, who was the owner of DC Comics. Within those pulp magazines, I, Spicy Tales or Spicy Adventures or something, Spicy Something was the title, and there was a one-page comic strip in each issue, Olga Mesmer, the girl with x-ray eyes. And so she had superpowers like, of course, x-ray vision. She had apparent super strength. She had another power where her, her blouse seemed to fall off <laughs> all the time. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, Olga Mesmer. I don't know why this made me think of Olga, but she, uh, she was a uh, superhero published by Harry Donenfeld really before the term superhero existed, before Superman before DC Comics. I'm sort of surprised that nobody at DC, Grant Morrison or anybody else, has revived Olga Mesmer. And here's uh, 194, a familiar trope. This is uh, Superman fighting Clark Kent. And JP, that was on the other one too, right? Did I see that? Yes, JP. So, now, recently I was, what was the name? Ross Barnes, I think. There was a stamp on some books that we unboxed. And uh, one commenter, God, I wish I could remember his name off the top of my head. Uh, but he, he pointed out that Ross Barnes was not just some kid who got a, a name stamp for Christmas. It was an actual store, Ross M. Barnes in uh, Cheyenne, whatever state it was. Uh, had a had a store with a you know a used bookstore or something like that with uh, comics and kids would uh, go in and just read comics for hours and hours and so maybe JP is a a store I don't know what the name of the store would be but I'm betting in this case it is just some kid with a name stamp <laughs> this one's a nice nice con well I said nice condition but it's got this issue down here but the spine is nice. Action Comics 281. And there are two books in there. But unfortunately, this second one didn't get turned around so we could see the cover. So we'll have to take a look, see what it is. And it is 291. That's kind of a classic cover. Science Fiction Studios. Giant Ant, Adventure Comics, 245, wow. Just two issues before the debut of the Legion of Superheroes. Huh. Here's Adventure Comics number 238. It's in kind of rough shape, some water damage here. Adventure Comics 272. This one's in kind of rough shape as well. And number 273. The boy who was stronger than Superboy. Oh my goodness. Lana Lang looking very frumpy here. <laughs> oh, the blind boy of steel. That's sad. Adventure Comics 259. Here is uh, 270, Mon Pa Ken or Skrulls, <laughs> 281, Superboy's New Parents, that's another familiar trope, and 280, some Lori Lamaris action. Nice. Ooh, Incredible Hulk 271, first appearance of Rocket Raccoon. 
that book does well. And because of the white cover, it's it's not a really common book in high, high grade. You know, your covers tend to be tanned or yellow. This one looks pretty good. Amazing Spider-Man number 135. Here's another old adventure comics, uh, JP. <laughs> the Journey of the Second Superboy. Now, this is interesting. This, this character right here is called Titan Boy, and he's from Titan. And uh, and his power is telepathy, and his costume is kind of red and white with this red stripe down the center of white sides. So he he sort of you know if if you believe in the concept of precursor characters, this is kind of a precursor to Satin Girl because the costume is kind of similar, and she was from Saturn and was a telepath. Uh, and then that was later changed when it was realized, well, Saturn's a gas giant. Probably nobody lives on Saturn. And so they kept her name Saturn Girl because that was established, but moved her to Titan. So it's just kind of interesting that, you know, this is 205. So, you know, this is what, you know, 42 issues before Saturn Girl's appearance. Here is a boy from the same planet with the same powers in a very similar costume. And it was JP's book again. Here's some more JP uh, collection. I'll have to see if we can get Overstreet to recognize the JP collection. <laughs> Jimmy Olsen number six. Wow, that may be the earliest, the earliest issue of Jimmy Olsen I've ever actually held in my hands. That's cool. The Joker number one, very popular book, does very very well on eBay. If you've ever read it, the story is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> because at this time, we are still very heavy into the comics code where, you know, the, the villain must lose, must never profit from his crimes, according to the code, or her crimes, as the case may be. And, uh, yeah, this, uh, this, every issue of the Joker was, you know, <laughs> not at all like the current Joker series. You know, the Joker had to be defeated and pay in every issue. So it was, you know, why you would have a series starring a villain was, uh, yeah, I, I can see why they would try it, why they would do it, but you know, creatively, with the code, it was a hard thing to pull off. Wonder Woman 199, a very kind of gothic romance-looking cover. This was during the period where she had no powers. I tried to make her into kind of a Diana Rigg adventure kind of character. A creature from the Bat Cave. What issue is this? Detective Comics 291. Coverless. Well, that'll be an easy book to grade. Sorry there, Mojro. My bubby. Champions number one. Not in super high grade, but that's a that's a cool book. So if you if you don't know the story about Champions, T Tony Isabella was the writer, and he proposed an Angel Iceman buddy book you know kind of like a buddy cop movie because you know at this point the x-men was in reprints the sales had been low enough that, that marvel effectively canceled the series just kept it running in reprints and so none of the x-men characters were being used except for the beast uh who had been uh, transformed given a new uh, a new more bestial look and i think by this point might even have been uh, in the avengers so Tony Isabella proposed a, a buddy book with the Angel and Iceman, but the editors at Marvel, and I, I can't remember which editor specifically, nixed that and said he could have a team book, but laid out some parameters. This editor's philosophy was that every superhero team, you had to have a strong guy, you had to have a woman, and you had to have a character who had his own series. So that's how... This seemingly random allotment of, of characters came together. You had to have a woman, so there's Black Widow. You had to have a strong guy, so there's Hercules. And you had to have a character who had his own title. There's Ghost Rider. Complimenting Angel and Iceman. I loved the Champion series when I was a kid. I don't think I, I came in until issue 8 or 9. But I, I loved that series and was uh, very disappointed when it was cancelled. Here's some more uh, Archie versus Aliens. Laugh number 128. 
Okay, gang, so that this video doesn't get too crazy long, we will split this box up into two videos. So come back tomorrow. We will finish up this box. Until then, goodbye, good luck, and please be good to each other.